I love you one, my name's Tomko and today I'm showing you how to make 7 super easy hidden inputs for Minecraft Bedroom. Alright, so starting off we have what I like to call the redstone dust key. So by simply placing dust over here in this corner, it reveals our hidden door. We can then walk and down, do our hidden things but once we're done, we can head on out of here and close it back simply by doing that once more. But to build this, you're first going to have to find yourself a corner of grass, just like this. It doesn't have to be grass, it could be any block, but it needs to be in this shape, or this shape. Alright, so once you've found your corner blocks, you then want to place a lever on the underside of that block, just like so. Turn it on, then place your dust on top of that block, so that's where it's going to be, where it activates. You then want to come a block down, a block to the left of that, remove this block since it's temporary, in the place of restroom repeater coming away from it, bear in mind it should turn on. Dust down here, solid block on top of that so it turns on, and then finally a sticky piston facing upwards just below this grass block. By the way, this will extend destroying your redstone dust. So if you jump and place it upwards, it extends just like so. So now every time you put dust on this, it triggers. So just like this one, the majority of the designs will produce a short pulse. But if you want it to toggle like I have done over there, you'd first have to wire it up into a T flip flop. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, I suggest you watch the video I've linked in the description. Not only will that teach you how to toggle it, it'll also show you how to wire up this into any door. So next up is what I like to call the invisible button. And basically what you have to do is you have to line up your cursor properly. You then look behind this stair and if I click it, I can click through the wall and activate our door. So you're pretty much just giving yourself wall hacking superpowers. So to start off with, I'd recommend you get yourself a wall. If you haven't got one already, just build one. i make mine three high just like so. You don't want to remove two blocks of the wall. One like that, and like that. I'm going to be replacing these with stairs, but you have to place them in a very specific way. The first one you have to place just like so. So it's kind of to the side of the wall, and the second one you have to place like so. So it's showing its back to the wall. And you can see, we've given ourselves this weird brick which looks slightly different than the others. And it's going to be this one that we press through. We then want to come to the back. And when you have this there, come out two blocks. One, two. Remove this first block. Place your button on top of that block. And now, every time we go to look through the stair, I can click it. Like so, it activates that button. Now, if you're on Pocket Edition, I recommend you put the crosshair on. Do not try and do it with just the circle thing, it's much harder to do. And then once more, just to show you exactly where to look, it's this exact pixel line up here, and it's towards the top left corner. And then when you look through it and press it, you can go right through the block. And I can use this button to wipe up into any door. Right, so next up is what I like to call the farmland key. But the way it works is you come up to a specific block, which I've chosen to be over there, you simply hoe it, and that activates our hidden entrance, which just so happens to lead directly to my disco room. Sorry about that, G got a bit carried away. Right, so to build this one, similarly to what we had to do over there, you're going to have to find yourself a bit of grass, with another grass block behind it, just like so. Right, so once you have your two grass blocks, you want to come down to this bottom one. You can place a lever on the bottom side of it. Once again, turn it on. You then come to the back of this and block down and put dust on this, just like so. You then place a sticky piston on the back of that with an observer there. You want to come a block this way and put a piece of dust here, just like so, and that will flash every time you hoe that piece of dirt. So just to test it out, if I were to hoe this, that flashes. Then if I was to squash it and hoe it again, it flashes once more. Alright, so next up we have what I like to call the hidden torch key. It is quite similar to the redstone dust key, but instead of having it on the floor, we have it on the ceiling instead. So if I were to place it up here, it does a little thing, and then our secret door opens up, just like so. We could then do it again, just to close it off. So to build this one, you're going to have to find two blocks, just like this. But your rest on torch is going to go there. For me, I found the best example of this is simply by attaching an indent to the wall or just attaching it to the ceiling itself. Alright, so once you've found your ceiling blocks, you're going to place a dropper on top of the first block. Crouch and place an observer coming away from the dropper. 
So you have to crouch and then jump and place it, just like so. Temporary block in front of this observer. Sticky piston just down like so, move that block. Torch on the side of that observer so that this sticky piston extends. Torch to the side of that sticky piston. Come two blocks down from the torch. Remove this top block. Just on top of that, the repeater coming away from it set to four ticks. And that is it done. So every time we put a torch here, that repeater turns on. So moving on, we have the under the floor item detector. So this is a really easy one. All we have to do is throw an item on the floor, just like so, and that opens up our hidden base, which just so happens to be disguised as a tree. And then once we're down here and we want to get out, all we have to do is take the item out the hopper minecart, quickly make our way out of here, and it will close up behind itself. So to build this one, you want to find the block you want to actually throw items into. I'm going to choose this block. Once you found it, you want to come two blocks down just next to it, like so. Remove the block directly below it. You want to place a detector rail down here. Put the hopper minecart on that, just like so. So now every time we throw an item onto that block, the hopper minecart down here picks it up. You want to remove the rest of the floor, or at least give yourself a bit of area to build this thing. That should be enough. You place a comparator coming away from the hopper minecart, making sure you've used a detector rail down here, so now every time you put an item into the hopper minecart, that comparator picks it up. And then you could simply wire this comparator straight up into a hidden door, but I recommend you add this thing so that you can actually leave it with enough time to escape without it closing in on you. But to carry on, you can place a repeater in front of this comparator. Three dust, just in a line like so. Comparator facing this way, so it's the opposite way that repeater's facing. And comparison facing this this way, so it's the same way the repeater is facing. Place a solid block in front of this comparator, just here. Then rest some torch on the side of that block, just like so. So now every time we throw an item onto this block, that torch turns on. But now every time we take an item out of this minecart, it takes a lot longer for the torch to turn off, no on again, which will give you enough time to actually get out your hidden base. So you want to link this rest on torch directly. To your hidden door. Furthermore, we have what I like to call a secret container. Well, in reality, it's not the container that's secret, it's the stuff you have to put in it. So, if I was to take some sticks and coal out of this one, I put in a stack, a stack of coal and five sticks. Just to prove it has to be five sticks, let's say I put in four. Nothing happens, but as soon as I put in this final one, it reveals our hidden entrance. And you also don't have to use furnaces, you can use any container in the game, and there's quite a few examples on the screen for you right now. So the first thing you want to do is whack your container down, just like so. This is what's going to be your secret entrance. Well, no, this is going to be the thing that activates your secret entrance. Then, your wall will go behind that, just like so. You're going to place a comparator coming away from that furnace, just in front of this block. So just to test it, if we were to put anything in this furnace, Nope, I failed to put things in the furnace, it turns on. And you can actually just use that as the entire hidden input itself. But if someone accidentally puts anything in the furnace, it obviously opens it up. So it's not very secure. So to carry on, you want to place another comparator going into this comparator. And then the first comparator, you actually want to toggle simply by right clicking. And that should turn the little light on the front on. This is very important, make sure it's on. You then want to put another container behind that comparator. I like to use the exact container that I've already used. It just makes it simpler in a little bit. You then come around to the front of this comparator, place yourself a bit of rest on dust down, comparator going to the left or in the opposite direction that that one's facing in, two dust just like so, a repeater coming away from this dust. You then come around and place another comparator, but this time coming once more of this dust and once again, right click this one so that the little light in front of it turns on. So that one has the light, that one has a light, and these two, they don't have lights. So why say the two types of containers in Minecraft? One of them measures items, and the other one measures inputs. But when you place a comparator behind them, both of those things get measured and turned into signal strength. The way furnaces and other item measurers work is the more items you put in there, the higher the signal strength is going to be. And it actually works out that a specific amount of items equivalates to a specific amount of signal strength. And then what I need you to do is look at the containers type and look at how many items you can have that equivalent to a signal strength. Then once you've chosen the one you want, for example, for a furnace, I'm going to go with a stack of 19 items. And I know that equivalates to the signal strength 7. You then want to drop down signal strength. So I'm going to go down to number 6. 
you don't see how many items equivalent to that. So that's one stack and five. And then once you've got your drop down number, you're going to put that amount of items into your other container. So not the one you're going to put items into, the one behind the wall. So I'm going to put a stack and five items into here, just like so. And now we can actually test it since I know that that comparator at the back will only turn on once a stack and 19 items have gone into this furnace. As you can see, it's on. But if I have to change this to two stacks of items, it doesn't work. I'm actually cooking things. <laughs> don't want to be doing that. So let's say you're using crafters instead. Crafters work completely differently since the amount of boxes you take equivalates to a single strength. So you don't have to care about items or anything, but let's say you want to click five boxes in the crafter. You take one off that, you put four boxes in this crafter behind it, and I will only turn on once I press five boxes in there. You can see, it's on. If I were to take one more, it turns off. If I were to take two less, it also off. And then of course you can wire this comparator into a repeater, into a redstone line, connecting straight to your redstone door. And then finally we have what I like to call the spontaneous button. And this is by far the easiest method. So the way this one works is you have your button on you all the time. Then when you want to access your hidden door, you take it out, you remember where to place it, and you simply place it. It's that easy. Then once you want to leave your hidden base, you press it one more time, you then pick up your button, and you go about the rest of your day. Sure, it's not as cool as the others, but it is so simple as you're literally just picking up and placing down buttons. And if you didn't know, buttons can actually power redstone through walls just like this. So every time I press that, that activates, you then wired this into a T flip flop, power your door. But if I were to remove this button, you see there's no way you'd know there's actually a hidden input behind this. But anyways, that is the tutorial done. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments or join the Discord server. That is by far the best place to contact me. But that's all for me, and I'll see you all later. I hope you have fun with the new hidden inputs. Bye! <laughs>